Kerala has been a major spice exporter since 3000 BCE, according to Sumerian records and it is still referred to as the Garden of Spices or as the Spice Garden of India. Kerala's spices attracted ancient Arabs, Babylonians, Assyrians and Egyptians to the Malabar coast in the 3rd and 2nd millennia BCE. Phoenicians established trade with Kerala during this period. Arabs and Phoenicians were the first to enter Malabar coast to trade spices. The Arabs on the coasts of Yemen, Oman, and the Persian Gulf, have made the first long voyage to Kerala and other eastern countries. They brought the cinnamon of Kerala to the Middle East. The Greek historian Herodotus, 5th century BCE, records that in his time the cinnamon spice industry was monopolized by the Arabs and the Phoenicians. Islam arrived in Malabar coast, a part of the larger Indian Ocean Rim, via spice and silk traders from the Middle East. It is generally agreed among scholars that Middle Eastern merchants frequented the Malabar coast, which was the link between the West and ports of East Asia, even before Islam had been established in Arabia. The western coast of India was the chief center of Middle Eastern trading activities right from at least 4th century AD and by about 7th century AD, and several West Asian merchants had taken permanent residence in some port cities of the Malabar coast. According to popular tradition, a number of foreign accounts have mentioned about the presence of considerable Muslim population in the coastal towns of Kerala. Arab writers such as Masudi of Baghdad, 934-955 AD, Idrisi, 1154 AD, Abul Fida, 1213 AD, and al damishki 1325 AD, mentions the Muslim communities in Kerala. Some historians assume that the Mapalas can be considered as the first native, settled Islamic community in South Asia. The southwestern coast of India was known as Malabar, a mixture of Tamil Malai and Arabic or Bar, to the West Asians. Persian scholar al buryani 973 to 1052 AD, appears to have been the first to call the region by this name. Masudi of Baghdad, 896 to 965 AD, speaks about the contacts between Malabar and Arabia. Authors such as Ibn Kurdad, 869 to 885 AD, Ahmad al Baladuri, 892 AD, and Abu Zaid of Zaraf, 916 AD, mentions Malabar ports in their works. According to the legend of Charaman Perumal, or as per one version of it, the first Indian mosque was built in 624 AD at Kodungalur with the mandate of the last the ruler, the Charaman Perumal, of Chera dynasty, who converted to Islam during the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad, 570-632 AD. Perumal's proselytizers, led by Malik ibn Dinar, established a series of mosques in his kingdom and north of it, thus facilitating the peaceful expansion of Islam in Kerala. There can be little doubt of the early Muslim presence, and of the religious tolerance based on economic imperatives, on the Malabar coast. The account of conversion of Islam by the then Charaman Perumal was a huge event that so many natives had converted to Islam same as their king. The Middle Eastern Muslim traders and Kerala mercantile community went through a long period of peaceful intercultural growth till the arrival of the Portuguese explorers, early 16th century. Quillan, Colum, in South Kerala was the southernmost of the Kerala ports associated with black pepper. It served as the region's gateway to the eastern Indian Ocean. East and Southeast Asia were the primary markets for Kerala's main export, the spices, until at least the circa 15th century. Moroccan traveler Ibn Battuta, 14th century, has recorded the considerably huge presence of native Muslim merchants and settlements of sojourning traders in most of the ports of Kerala. Immigration, and intermarriage secured by the common interest in the spice trade helped in this development. The monopoly of overseas spice trade in the Arabian Sea was safe with the Arab and Persian shipping magnates from the Malabar coast. Fortunes of these merchants depended on the political patronage of the native chiefs of Kalakut, Kozikode, Kananur, Connor, Cochin, Kochi, and Quillan, Kolam. The chiefs of these tiny kingdoms derived a great part of their revenue from taxing the spice trade. A 13th century granite inscription, in Old Malayalam and Arabic, at Much Hindi Mosque in Kalakut mentions a donation by the Hindu king to build a mosque. The inscription is the only surviving historical document recording royal endowment by a Hindu ruler, in the form of a grant, to the Muslim community in Kerala. By the early decades of the 14th century, travelers speak of Kalakut, Kozikode, as the major port city in Kerala. Some of the important administrative positions in the Kingdom of Kalakut, such as that of the Port Commissioner, were held by native Muslims. The Port Commissioner, the Shah Bundar, represented commercial interests of the native Muslim merchants. In his account, Ibn Battuta mentions Shah Bandars in Kalakut and Quillan, Ibrahim Shah Bundar and Muhammad Shah Bundar. The merchant magnates owning ships, spread their shipping and trading business interests across the Indian Ocean. 
the famous Nakuda Mishkal who possessed ships for the trade with China, Yemen and Persia was active in Kalakut in the 1340s. The native Muslim line of Ali Rajas of Arakal, near Kananur, who were the vassals of the Kaladiri, ruled over the Lakshadweep. Zain Aldin Makdum, circa 1498-1581, estimates that 10% of the population of Malabar was Muslim. The Middle Eastern Muslims controlled the lucrative western arm of the overseas long-distance trade, to the ports of the Red Sea, and the Persian Gulf, from the Malabar coast. Export items across the Arabian Sea included spices such as pepper, ginger and cardamom, transhipped textiles, coconuts and associated products. Gold, copper, and silver, horses, silk and various aromatics were imported into Kerala. The native Muslims dominated the trade to Pegu, Mergui, Malacca, in Myanmar and Malaysia, and points east, and the Indian coastal trade, Kanara, Malabar, Ceylon, Maldives, and Coromandel Coast, and other Bay of Bengal shores, with the Kedis from Coromandel Coast. Muslims, with Gujarati Vanyas, also took part in the trade with ports of Gujarat. The Indian coastal trade included goods such as coconuts, coir, pepper, cardamom, cinnamon and rice. Rice was a major import item into Kerala, from the Kanara and the Coromandel coast. Low value but high volume trade in foodstuffs that passed through the Gulf of Manor was also handled by the native Muslims. In the past, there were many native Muslim traders in the ports of Malabar known as the Mapala originally meaning the Great Child. Following the discovery of a direct sea route from Europe to Kozikode in 1498, the Portuguese began to expand their territories and ruled the seas between Ormus and the Malabar coast and south to Ceylon. In the first two decades of 16th century CE, circa 1500 to 1520, Portuguese traders were successful in reaching an agreement with the local Hindu chiefs and native Muslim, Mapala, merchants in Kerala. The major contradiction was between the Portuguese state and the Kingdom of Calicut. In January 1502, the first battle of Cananor between the third Portuguese Armada and Kingdom of Cochin under João de Nova and Zamorin of Cozicote's navy marked the beginning of Portuguese conflicts in the Indian Ocean. The battle was fought over two days, between December 31, 1501 and January 2, 1502, and was the first major Portuguese naval engagement in the Indian Ocean. Although badly outnumbered, de Nova's bold tactics, better trained and prepared men, and superior weaponry proved decisive for the Portuguese to defeat the blocking force of Calicut, break out of Cananor, and emerge victorious from the battle. Kingdom of Calicut, whose shipping was increasingly looted by the Portuguese, evolved into a center of native Muslim resistance. In February 1509, the defeat of the joint fleet of the King of Gujarat, the Mamluk Burji Sultanate of Egypt, and the Zamorin of Calicut with support of the Republic of Venice and the Ottoman Empire in Battle of Dieu marked the beginning of Portuguese dominance of the spice trade in the Indian Ocean. Sooner rather than later, tensions arose between the Mapala traders of Cananor and the Portuguese state. The ships of the Cananor Mapalas again and again fell prey to the Portuguese sailors off the coast of Maldives, an important point between Southeast Asia and the Red Sea. Interests of the Portuguese Casado Moradores in Cochin, now planning to capture the spice trade through the Gulf of Manor and to Sri Lanka, came into the conflict with Mapalas and the Tamil, Mare Kayars. The narrow gulf held the key to the trade to Bengal, especially Chittagong. By the 1520s, open confrontations between the Portuguese and the Mapalas, from Ramanada Param, and Thuthu Kuti to northern Kerala, and to western Sri Lanka, became a common occurrence. The Mapala traders actively worked even in the island of Sri Lanka to oppose the Portuguese. The Portuguese maintained patrolling squadrons off the Kerala ports and continued their raids on departing native Muslim fleets at Calicut and Quillan. After a series of naval battles, the once powerful Mapala chief was finally forced to sue for peace with the Portuguese in 1540. The peace was soon broken, with the assassination of the Qazi of Kananur Abu Bekar Ali, 1545, and the Portuguese again came down hard on the Mapalas. The mantle of the native Muslim resistance was now taken by the Ali Rajas of Kananur, who even forced the King of Calicut to turn against the Portuguese once again. By the close of the 16th century, the Ali Rajas had emerged as figures with as much influence in Kerala as the Kaladiri, Chirakil Raja, himself. The Portuguese tried to establish a monopoly in the spice trade in India, using violent naval warfare. Whenever a formal war was broke out between the Portuguese and the Calicut rulers, the Portuguese attacked and plundered, as the opportunity offered, the native Muslim ports in Kerala. Small, lightly armed, and highly mobile vessels of the Mapalas remained a major threat to Portuguese shipping all along the west coast of India. 
Mapal emergence, now controlling pepper trade in Calicut in the place of the West Asian Muslims, drew Mapala corsairs and used them to transport the spices past Portuguese blockades. Some Mapala traders even tried to outwit the Portuguese by reorienting their trade to Western Indian ports. Some chose an overland route, across the Western Ghats, for the export of spices. By the end of the 16th century, the Portuguese were finally able to deal with the Mapala challenge. Kanjali Marakar was defeated and killed, with the help of the Calicut ruler, in circa 1600 AD. The Ali Rajas of Kananur were given permission to send ships even to the Red Sea, as a way of ensuring their cooperation. The relentless battles led to the eventual decline of the native Muslim community in Kerala, as they gradually lost control of the spice trade. The native Muslims who had been dependent solely on commerce were reduced into severe economic perplexity. Some traders turned inland, South Malabar, in search of alternate occupations to commerce. The native Muslims of Kerala gradually became a society of small traders, landless laborers and poor fishermen. The once affluent, and urban, Muslim population became predominantly rural in Kerala. The discriminatory land tenure system tracing its origins to pre-modern Kerala gave native Muslims of Kerala and other native communities no access to land ownership. This led to a series of violent attacks against the high caste landlords and colonial administration, the Mapala outbreaks, circa 1836-1921, and in 1921-22, it took in the form of an explosion known as Mapala Uprising, Malabar Rebellion. The uprising which initially had the support of Indian National Congress leaders such as Mohandas K. Gandhi, was suppressed by the colonial government, with martial law being temporarily instituted in the region and the leaders of the rebellion tried and executed. <laughs>